hello and welcome to this episode so in this video we're going to talk about how to generate different types of random numbers with numpy and i'm going to create a new notebook because i think the older one is getting long so i'm going to call this let me see how i call this one so this one is numpy basics i'm going to call this um random numbers random numbers and let's say numpy random numbers okay great so as usual i'm going to start by importing numpy as np and i'm also going to import matplotlib just because i will be plotting the random numbers to explain concepts such as random distribution um, normal distribution and uniform distribution but because the objective of this video is not about teaching you how to use matplotlib i don't want you to worry if you don't understand how the plotting works because i will make um, a video dedicated entirely to teaching you how to create various plots in matplotlib but the objective of this video is to show you how to um, generate random numbers different types of random numbers with numpy and to help you visualize it i'm going to use numpy uh, matplotlib to plot the distribution of those random numbers just so you get an understanding of um, what i want to show you but don't worry if you don't understand the matplotlib aspect of it so i'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and i'm going to say matplotlib matplotlib inline so that the reason i'm doing um, the magic thing there matplotlib inline is to um, let the plot show up without me having to call plt.show but like i said don't worry if you don't understand anything so the first question is why would you want to generate random numbers when it comes to neural networks and the answer is most of the time the weights and biases or the parameters of neural networks are initialized randomly and that is why it is important for you to know how to generate random numbers okay now when it comes to generating of random numbers there are different ways in which you can generate your random numbers using numpy i'm going to show you how to generate um, random numbers from a normal distribution and i'm also going to show you how to generate random numbers from a uniform distribution and finally i'll show you how to generate random numbers from a range that you specify on your own so let's get started i'm going to show you how to generate um random numbers from a normal distribution and then i will use i'll plot a histogram of it to explain to you what it means when we say something is normally distributed okay so i'm going to generate values by saying um, np dot random dot normal okay and watch me over here i'm going to explicitly state that the size is um let's say 200 so what this means is i'm generating 200 random numbers that are supposed to be normally distributed if you don't understand what normal distribution is don't worry two minutes down the line i promise you are going to understand what i mean okay so now i have my um values over here in case you want to see what's in there you can just print it out and you can see that this is made up of 200 randomly generated numbers just to be sure you can also print the shape which you have learned about in previous videos and you can see that it is a vector of size 200 okay and the numbers in there are randomly generated now what do we mean by normal distribution to help you understand this i'm going to plot a histogram of these um these random numbers and use it to explain to you what it means for for um, a series of values to be normally distributed so to do that i'm going to say plt.hist to plot the histogram from the values okay now this is a plot of the random um, numbers that i generated in cell 2 here and what it basically shown in this plot is as a, as a histogram you know histogram is going to plot the frequency of the numbers the frequencies of the of the bins that it has created here so what it means is that the numbers that we have down here the, the numbers that we have in the values array are going to be 
um, um, grouped based on frequency how often they occur and it's going to be um, grouped into bings just just as you remember from um, your basic statistics class so it's going to group them according to bins and then it's going to count the frequency and as you can see you see that a lot more of the values are clustered around zero which is here you see the f the highest frequency is recording um, let's say 43 or 44 and it is around the zero the value zero and then you see that as you move away from the mean okay as you move away from the mean the the frequency of the other numbers keep going down and down both on the right side and also on the left side so when we say um, a series of values are normally distributed what it means is that they are clustered around a particular figure that is um, close to the average of the entire numbers in the series and they they are distributed according to the standard deviation so you, what it means is as you move many standard deviations away from the mean the frequency of numbers within those um, range goes down and down and down let me give you um, um, a, a real world example to make it more concrete so for example let's think of the average height of people according to age so if you gathered let's say 500 males who are um, all 30 years old and you measure their height you will see that a lot more of the people have their height to be equal to or closer to a little bit above or below the average of the entire 500 people so if you if you calculated the average of the height of all these 500 people you realize that individually a lot more people have their height closer to the average what it means is that normally we have an average height according to age and a lot more people have this height and those who do not have these those that we consider as outliers are not that many for example it is extremely rare to find people who are extremely short okay and it is also extremely rare to find people who are um, um, very tall okay who are who are so tall that you, you, you don't really see them often but it is very common to find people of average height and that is what the normal distribution um, graph shows us so what you need to understand is there is a clustering okay there is a clustering around the mean and then they, they, they are separated by a standard deviation and the more you go away from the mean in this graph the mean is going to be somewhere around zero and then the more you move away from the mean you see that the frequency of those occurrences reduces and reduces and reduces the farther away you go from the mean the lesser the frequency of those values in that range so this is it about um, normal distribution I'm going to run the cells again to generate entirely different set of random numbers and you see that still we have a graph that looks like that so I, I rerun the cell and you can still see that we have a graph that um, has some clustering around the mean and then as you move away from it the frequency get lower and lower let's run it one more time so I'm going to generate the random numbers all again and you can see that we still have a normal distribution curve it, it looks like a bell so if you plotted some curve around it is going to look like a bell okay so that is it about normal distribution now um, in the previous videos I didn't have to specify size explicitly I just call the the routine and then I pass in the size why am I doing this explicit um, um specification of the size here the reason is that the normal function or the random dot normal function takes in um, a lot more values or a lot more parameters which you can specify of course it assumes some default but then you can also go ahead and then change them for example you can specify the the average or the mean along which you want your values to be clustered and you can also specify the standard deviation how did I know this? It is as simple as just googling numpy.random.normal and then you go to the numpy um, 
documentation. If you go to the official documentation, then you're going to see that um, the parameters it takes is um, it takes a float or an array like of float, and then they call that mean. And then they also have the scale, which is also called the standard deviation. And then you come out to specify the size over here. So let's go ahead and then try something. So they even have an example here where they have a, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of 0 0.1. Let's try a similar thing. So I'm going to come here, random numbers, and I'm going to create a mean, sorry. I'm going to create a mean of, let's say, 0 0.5 and then I'm going to create a um, standard deviation of let's say 0 0.1 okay and then I'm going to create I'm going to generate random numbers that are clustered around this mean and separated by this standard deviation I'm going to plot it and now you can see that the clustering happens around the 0 0.5 um, value here because I specified the mean to be 0 0.5 and then the standard deviation is 0 0.1. You can play with different figures and then see what you come up with. So let's say 2.5 and then a mean of 1.0. Let's generate these figures and now again you can see that the highest frequency is recorded around the 2.5 um, value and all the other ones are separated from it according to how far away they are from the mean and um, um, it, this is determined by the standard deviation that you specified so thank you very much for watching this and i'll see you in the next video